So um, we know that adding antiandrogens early is, um, uh, is, is standard of care now, and I'll quickly review that data. Uh, this was evolved over a series of different clinical trials, the first of which was Stampede. I have to really congratulate, congratulate the, uh, the Brits on this and the Europeans because this is a trial that's been around since uh, 2004 and they just keep on adding different arms and making things work better. So Stampede is a trial that looked at Abby plus uh, stand of care antiangiogen therapy versus antiangiogen therapy alone, showed a hazard ratio of 0.63 and um, no real evidence of heter heterogeneity by stratification factors, whether that's Gleason score, the metastatic status. Uh, these were both M positive and M negative patients. It's a very heterogeneous trial. So um, uh, when we look at this compared to standard of care, as I said before, there's an improvement in survival. But when we're looking at these next generation agents, I, I think we have to look very carefully at toxicity. And this is something that has been bothering me for quite some time, the issue of cardiovascular toxicity with abiraterone and prednisone. I think it's been one of the silent um, uh, issues in the room because if you look back to these trials, uh, some of them required that patients not have significant cardiovascular disease, and then once it's gotten out to the general population, everybody goes on these drugs. So uh, the Fox Chase group is actually, uh, excuse me, the Jefferson group, actually reported recently uh, that there was a higher rate than we would have expected of sudden cardiovascular deaths with abiraterone and prednisone, and that's something you've got to be really, really careful of. So what we're going to have to do is select our treatment based upon our patients. And also the question is how much do you need for the non-metastatic patients that's being capped at two years in this particular study. And there was a position paper that we just uh, came out with in JCO with Ma Hussein and several other of our colleagues that uh, uh, sort of tried to talk about this issue about how long you should continue it. Latitude was a metastatic trial that was run by Kareem Fazazi, uh, international study, uh, Abby Prednisone versus ADT, and um, uh, well distributed in terms of uh, Gleason score, uh, extent of disease, uh, about 5% with liver metastases, as well as pain at, at baseline. Half of these patients were asymptomatic. This is the final survival curves from latitude, as we see here, 53-month uh, survival with Abby Pred uh, versus 36.5 months. That's, I think, really spectacular, and um, uh, the median survival is now 4.5 years. That's pretty good. Um, uh, Kathy Tangen, who is at SWAG, is the statistician, would kill me for doing this, but if you start trying to superimpose each of these on each other, it's pretty similar. Uh, if you look at docetaxel and abiraterone, same thing as far as the survivals go, and this is charted in latitude, the c control arms. So the question is, is there a biological selection factor? How do we look at these issues? And it's now further complicated by the fact that we're moving the other antiandrogens up front. So this is the enzymate study that was run by Chris Sweeney. It was presented at ASCO this year. Uh, this is different than either of those other trials because it allowed for chemotherapy. So uh, they, they were stratified based upon planned early docetaxel and also antiresorptive therapy. Some patients received bisphosphonates and the volume of disease. So ADT versus ADT plus enzalutamide. And as one would expect, no surprise here, uh, there was an improvement in survival, hazard ratio of 0.67, and you could put that curve on, on top of everything else at this point as well. Now, um, we start looking at time to clinical progression or death, time to uh, uh, PSA rise, again, similar in both arms. And this is where I think there's, this is a little bit tricky. What about docetaxel? And a lot of our patients say, I want the kitchen sink. Throw everything at me, and is there justification? My mind, not yet. And the reason being is, although you see an improvement, a better a clinical progression-free survival, if docetaxel is on board, there's no difference in OS. And uh, I, I don't really think that that's really justified by giving all that much treatment at this point. What we need are better selection factors to go forth with. Second trial arches, a different endpoint. Again, I'll disclose I was one of the uh, people on the steering committee for this. Uh, different endpoint than what we, uh, uh, we had uh, for uh, uh, the enzymet. This is a PFS endpoint, a rate bar PFS. So it read out a little bit sooner. One-to-one -one randomization, enzalutamide placebo. Also, docetaxel was, was permitted and uh, the first patient was enrolled in 2016, and the RPFS data was generated in, in October of two, th of last, of two years ago. And uh, again, uh, this is not a survival endpoint. Um, uh, we see similar balances of patients, although uh, when we look at this, 10% did not have metastatic disease, and that's actually a, a fluke of this particular study. Improvement in RPFS for the combination, same hazard ratio as what you see with the other agents, and uh, too early to determine whether there's a survival benefit or not. 
So uh, that's something that we have to keep in mind, but I think, again, it's going to be consistent. Titan. Um, so uh, this is apalutamide versus placebo. Again, same thing. Docetaxel was permitted in the study. Dual primary endpoints this time, OF and OS and PFS, and this is randomized against placebo. And uh, we see, again, similar hazard ratios, about 0.6 in terms of survival, uh, and uh, PFS very, very similar to what we saw before. Different pattern of side effects. Apalutamide, you see more rash, fatigue. You have to watch their thyroid function tests. And um, again, this is different than what you would expect. So there was really uh, a lack of benefit for, uh, for visceral disease and uh, prior docetaxel use, but these are really, really small. This is where you would expect to see uh, the best difference uh, with docetaxel. But again, this is retrospective. It's hard to determine. So what have we got? So we've got charted, which shows docetaxel, stampede also docetaxel and abiraterone compared to androgen deprivation therapy, apalutamide, and enzalutamide as well. So all of these are showing a survival benefit. And um, it's really, as I mentioned before, just picking your side effect dealer's choice. There are other trials that are out there. This one's been hanging around for a long time in SWOG. Uh, this is quite some time, actually. It's still maturing. Uh, orentanol is a similar agent, or otherwise known as TAC700, uh, to abiraterone, maybe a little bit less nausea with this. Um, and uh, there were also some studies that were giving it without steroids. Uh, this was randomized against bicalutamide with uh, LHRH, primary endpoint OS. I'm not sure when this is going to read out, but hopefully soon. Piece 1, um, ADT versus ADT plus ABI, local RT, or both in newly diagnosed metastatic prostate cancer. So this is helping to answer the question about local therapy uh, and how that affects the overall survival. As we know, this is a controversial issue. And then SWAG has opened a trial that is uh, basically looking at standard systemic therapy in metastatic patients, plus or minus definitive treatment uh, for the local disease. And that could be prostatectomy or radiation therapy. This is also designed to look at the survival endpoint. I think this is an important trial because we've really danced with this issue about whether we should be doing local treatment or not on these patients. And I think this will be a good way of, of answering that. This is the overall uh, study right now. Uh, study map. We've talked a lot about these already. Titan, Arches, Aracense is looking at ADT plus docetaxel plus ODM-201, uh, otherwise known as darolutamide, and that's still recruiting. It's expected to read out um, in two years. Uh, other issues in hormone therapy that I think we need to consider, when you're on single agent abiraterone, again, the patients say, do I want the kitchen sink or not? Should I add enzalutamide to that? Uh, this was a much anticipated trial. It was run by Mike Morris in, 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 uh, in, in Alliance, randomizing patients to receive Enza or Enza plus Abby. And uh, I think you can see that there's no difference in survival on this and no difference in PSA response rates. There was more atrial fibrillation, liver function abnormalities, or hypokalemia. So it doesn't improve survival. I would not recommend you use the combination. I think, though, even though this is a negative study, it's important information for us. Dual androgen blockade does not seem to work. Now, whether that's going to work with uh, apalutamide and uh, abiraterone, I think we'll see that trial read out shortly. Finally, in the last couple of minutes, as Larry mentioned before, the issue about combining hormonal agents with uh, PARP inhibitors. And um, when you look carefully at, at uh, DNA repair patterns, there is a decrease in um, DNA repair enzymes in patients who receive uh, abiraterone. Not sure if it's the same for enzalutamide or not of the other agents, but again, we see it. So the, co the concept here was to combine the two of them together in a randomized trial, uh, placebo plus ABI versus olaparib. Uh, these patients uh, could be pretreated with docetaxel, two, less than two lines of prior chemotherapy, and no second generation hormonal agents. PFS, uh, RPFS was the primary endpoint. Again, well distributed in terms of patients, uh, PSA values, uh, and extent of disease. And this is the RPFS data, superior for the combination uh, versus abiraterone alone. Now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the uh, mutation status was, was measured by a variety of different techniques. But, but nonetheless, this is very, very intriguing data. So we do see in the mutated that there's a difference. But if we look at the wild type, there's also a difference in, uh, in the uh, survivals, so uh, excuse, radiographic PFS. So, so again, I think that this is holding true, and this may be something that we can use to overcome braconis. Now, the trouble here is the toxicity. 
there can be cardiovascular toxicity with the combination. And so uh, uh, there have been, I think there were well, there was, uh, two MIs on this particular trial. Uh, but again, you've got to balance this in terms of your patient population. Finally, I'd like to talk about a treatment that I'm extremely excited about. This is a Yale-generated drug. So I've got to declare I have no conflict of interest in this. I have been through, vetted through the conflict of interest committees. Yale's going to be the one making the money, not me, so I don't care. Uh, but anyway, this is a, a PROTAC, which is a very, very new form. This is a first-in-class drug. So what is a PROTAC? A PROTAC is a drug that binds to the androgen receptor and basically signals the lysosome to chew the androgen receptor up. So this is a way of overcoming resistance to ABI or ENZA where you've got ARV7. So um, this particular drug is called ARV110 and uh, this is, it ubiquinates the androgen receptor and then this PROTAC is recycled. And um, right now, we're in the phase, phase one portion of our, our study. In August of 2019, the first patient went on. I can disclose that in a press release that came out in December, I believe, uh, that this drug was safe. Uh, expect another pre press release sometime this year, uh, really updating it. And I'm not saying that, that because there's any significant information in this, but it's, it's mandated by the SEC for the company. Uh, so we're looking at this in patients who fail standard therapy. We're doing biopsies. We're correlating the androgen receptor mutational status with what we're seeing in our patients. Right now, we're taking all comers. We're going to basically move this out to a phase two trial in patients who failed Abby or Enza. And I'm very, very excited about this concept. So in conclusion, Abby, prednisone, and Lutamide, apalutamide, improved survival, metastatic hormone sensitive disease compared to ADT alone. Selection of the agents, I think, should be based upon side effect pattern, also financial toxicity as well. And we are now looking at novel antiandrogens in phase one studies.